I've been homeless now for about five years. Uh, I was sleeping in the, on the railroad track. It was just, I looked safe out in Cisco by the railroad track. So I was sleeping there for like a week until the police, the railroad police chased me out. Okay. How long before you sort of figured out a, a strategy? You learn quick. More than anything else, this is the story of how homeless street people make the transition from living in a house, an apartment, a home, to living on the street. First night on the street. Let's see, I rode the trains back and forth most of the night. And I had a few dollars, so I went to this dump called the um, Rich Hotel, which was on like the 10th and State. And it was really a dumpy place for men only, hotel for men only. And you had like a room, like a five by 10 room with a little twin bed in it. And that was it, but that was real cheap. That was like $10 a night. wandered around, I just walked around, and I thought that, I thought that I could get in touch with some of my friends and explain my position and see if I could get them to help me as far as living quarters go and stuff like that. So Any luck? I was luck? just thinking. I did for a couple of weeks, but that evaporates quick. Okay, your family might take you, they might not take you, but the thing is, if, you, if you're going back to your family, you got to live under their roof and go by their rules. And by you being, and I'm not gonna say old, but older, you kind of like, especially if you've been set, have you got used to having your own little place, you kind of set in your ways on things that you want to do, things that you don't want to do. And your friends, your friends, I got a couple of friends that they let me stay, sleep on their couch a night here and a night there, and I appreciate it, but you get tired of that. You use turns to, yeah, okay, you like the fact that they'll do it, you'll know they do it, but nope, this ain't for me. I thought my friends would help me, but you think that way for the first six months, you think you're gonna get back on your feet, then you realize that your friends aren't really your friends anymore because you can't do the things you used to do with them. Like what? Like you go out and bowl or play pool or whatever you did, you know. You can't afford to do it. You don't have the time. You don't have a place to stay. So they're not, you don't have the similarity. They slowly more or less stop talking to you or avoid you or look at you strange. Um, everybody finds the transition differently. I was staying with some friends, but the friends were not really enamoured of me smoking crack all over their house. We moved out of there and we were going to go and stay with some other people, and they said we could turn up there maybe about 10 o'clock at night. We went off to score. 
uh, sat round the corner from their house because we thought they probably wouldn't let us smoke our crack in their house. And we smoked our crack and then we wanted some more. So then we went back off to earn some more money and then it was like, oh my God, it's half past one in the morning. They're probably going to freak if we knock on their door now. So we just stayed out and then the next day we were just like, do you know what, we don't really want to go and stay with them. So... I suppose like any anything that's actually completely new to your system takes an awful lot of adjustment. Um, the sheer exhaustion I found the most difficult. It's because you're up at the crack of dawn and you can't bed down to I couldn't bed down to like midnight. Seven days a week at infinito. It's horrid. You absolutely I mean I was exhausted. You know, without even recognising being exhausted. Right. It's just shattered. You know, you'd sit down in the middle of the afternoon and, and fall asleep just through sheer exhaustion. That's mental, psychological, as well as physical exhaustion. I went to quiet spaces and I didn't socialise or mix with any other homeless people. I became a lone wolf. It was the only way I could survive it. That first night out and you don't know where you're going, you have no... You're out there, you don't know which way you're going. So I say, okay, I'm homeless. Now what? Because when you, when you get to that point, you like, your whole world has caved in. And it's not going to get any better unless you want it to get better. What about shelters? How often or did you ever use... Uh, homeless shelters, places designed like Pacific Gardens or some of these other places? I actually I tried Pacific Garden one time and it was one time too many. I would never go. Well, I hear now it's, it's much better, but at the time, it was on State Street and that is, say it's a shelter, it's a like last resort thing. You get a a, a room full of people that haven't bathed in God knows how long. That's the first thing that's going to get you. And then you got this room full of people and you got to find a spot on the floor for yourself, which is, I mean, it beats that really sleep on the floor inside. Once a place than out on the park bench, especially in the wintertime. But, um... But the main thing is the smell. I cannot damn Oh, ooh, you have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> they told me about the pad shelter in Oak Park. That's a churches that take people in, a different church every night, take in 50 people a night. They do a lottery at 7.30. You put a card in the hat. Depends on how cold it was. You usually get an uh, average of 60 to 70. Okay, so some guys would have to end up staying out on the street or find right. some other... What happened? Were you ever sort of not picked? Yeah, a lot of times. What, what would you do then? Sweep on the trains. Or mostly sweep on the trains and just ride the train all night. And what's that like? Well, you got a bunch of desperados on the train all night, and they, if you fall asleep, they try to cut your pockets, so you got to kind of hide your possessions in your, in your socks or something like that. I soon became aware that there's a statistic that says that 80% of homeless people are, are the victims of, of, of attacks and assaults, which I fully accept as a, as a statistic. However, it fails to mention that of those 80% of homeless people who are attacked and or victims of, of assaults, 90% of those are by other homeless people. So I avoided them. OK.
And you're trying to find a little odd job to do to make you a couple of bucks here and there. Or you go to some place where they, they call it day labor, which they are, they basically are non-existent now. And you could make a buck here, but there. That was okay. But um, it's never enough that you could save any substantial amount of money to get yourself off the street. So would you say it was enough to sustain you, but not enough to move you on? Exactly. Okay. Um, it was and enough to, yeah, to, to, to feed you. You, you. you got the money, you're going to eat. So. You say you sort of come onto the street with this idea that, you know, you wouldn't do this and you wouldn't do that. but When you're homeless, you, all, the, all the things that you think you would never do, or you say, nope, I ain't doing it, them things come to pass. You're going to do it. I used to be a very good beggar. I could make a couple of hundred pounds per night. I just used to walk up to people and tell them I needed money to get into a hostel and would they like to donate three pounds because I was three pounds short of the money. Perpetually three pounds short. Perpetually three pounds <laughs> short of the money. <laughs> just kind of bump into people out here and to kind of make relationships quite quickly out on the streets it's all like very intense and everything is like kind of here you don't have a I'm going home now I'll see you tomorrow there is no going home you're just here so it's very very different when is, you're out on the streets and homeless is there a is there a safety sort of concern that drives you into those kinds of relationships or because on one hand, you can imagine that homelessness would be a very solitary thing, but because it's dangerous, you could also imagine that people would sort of form little clusters. There may be some people that do it for safety reasons. To be perfectly honest, a lot of the time it's for convenience. Have you developed new friends? You said your old friends kind of slipped away. Have you developed new friendships? No. No. Uh, now it seems like now I'm developing more, more better friends. There was a lot of acquaintances that you used to you use people that were homeless and they could show you some tricks to how to get around, like get weak cards and stuff. They were more or less acquaintances, more than friends. Okay. So give me a couple of examples. What do you mean you use them or you? Well, they tell you what shelters were good and what food kitchens were good. Uh, What's dangerous parts in the neighborhood, the shelter, you know, things like how to get a link card. Did you ever lose hope? Did you ever want to give up? And what would that look like, giving Actually, up? I gave up for a while and I found myself on drugs. Nothing to brag about, because I'm not. And I would never do that one again. But that was a way to cope with the problem. Just like some people turn turn, turn to alcohol, I turn to drugs. And how did you quit that? I do a what? How did you quit that? Uh, once I got myself a little bit on my feet and could, could see where I could make a few dollars here and a few dollars there. When it, while I was on the drugs, every dime I got, the drug, drug man got. But at the time, I started making the money, like, okay, drug man ain't getting none of this. So you try to better yourself. You buy yourself a new outfit, or you buy yourself a coat or some shoes or something that's gonna better yourself. But if you look better, you feel better. So yeah, you feel good about yourself. That helps. Okay. That helps. You got to have some, even though you're 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 homeless. You got to have some sense of pride. Well, you feel depressed and lost. You got some sense that you're gonna come back, but then you keep losing it as the day goes, as the days go by. You start feeling that you're like, not going to. You almost want to give up. Like what? Just. When you say give up, what does that mean? You know, like a lot of people do. They just go to food food, uh, food places and shelters, and they don't even attempt to make money anymore. 
you're angry, especially if it's not your fault, you're angry, okay, okay, I didn't sign up for this. So now what I'm gonna do? But the whole time, the wheels are turning. You're thinking, okay, I'm in this position. I got to get out of it. And some people turn to alcohol, some people turn to drugs, some people turn to crime. It's, 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 all those are negatives. So you try to stay positive, which is not always easy. You try, but it, <laughs> it ain't the easiest thing to do. If you were to look at a guy like you, say, 15 years ago, before these experiences happened to you, um, how have you changed the way you look at the rest of us, I guess? As a general public, I feel that a high percentage of them don't even see you, don't know that you're there in their own world. So. And it's actually, I feel negatively about it because I think that they should, they should see you. I, I felt like when I was had a job and stuff, I did see them and talk to people that were homeless, and I actually helped some of them, but probably not enough. But I guess a lot of times I just was in my own life, my own world, and I just walked by them, and now you notice it more. That nine, over 90% of the people just, they seem like they're ignoring you, but they're just living their own life and don't want to get involved. out of the blue and one of my colleagues in the hostel came to me and said Stephen your dad's at the door and I'd seen him or spoke to him for like maybe 18 months and my father's initial reaction I came down obviously quite delighted to see him surprised and he said to me Stephen what are you doing here with these people and I had to explain to him daddy I am one of these people now I became homeless in 2001. Prior to that, I was a social services manager. I had a consummate interest in art. And... Oh, I knew about it. So my friends and I, we hung out in Cicero, played pool and stuff. And we went up there and drank beer. And drank beer. I knew it was a uh, But it was a time when I first started selling street wise, I was homeless. Through the grace of God, ran into a nice young lady, and she's now my girlfriend, and I'm staying with her. 